All right, this will be one of those videos that, you know, goes down as one of my worst tutorials because I'm not going to be uh, talking so much about tutorial stuff. I mean, I guess I'll try, but for the most part, I'm just going to be going over some stuff and modeling and just maybe comparing how workflows have improved over the course of this hops release compared to previous hops releases. So with further ado, let's jump into it. So I'm looking at my playlist on the side of the screen over here. And so the first thing I see is a solenoid. So we're going to go ahead and go for that. So I'll press Alt V or uh, Alt X in order to bring up the mirror. We'll uh, shift click bisect in order to make it turn yellow, which means when we click this, it splits it in half automatically. So previously we would have to split it in half and delete half in order to split it. And now we've actually shortened that step. So, you know, whenever I do these tutorials, I always think about the processes that I went through because I practice these over and over and contemplate how we can make them faster. So we'll go ahead and add a screw. Screw automatically jumps over to where we need it to. We press tilde a couple of times. We have our drawing at the bottom of the screen. And we can also press H in order to look at the help, which really there's not anything that we need to do with help here. So we'll go ahead and click and apply and we're done here. However, I'm going to go into edit mode and we're going to select this single point and we'll control click it in order to add a bevel just on this single vertex. So if we press, let's see, one, things will go as they're supposed to. However, if we press two, things will go as they're not supposed to because we're beveling a vertex, but because it's second in line on the bevel, it's not going to work out. So. Back in the day, we would cancel or stop the operation here and look at the mesh looking bad like we're looking at it now and begin messing around the, with the modifier. But now we can actually hold shift or I believe control and just roll it up one. And by doing that, we've now placed a vertex bevel as the first mod in the stack while we're still inside of the modal without having to do anything. So that step has been improved. We can press Alt V, look at the wireframe wireframe always you know garbage in the center let's look at the face orientation at least it is spun the correct way so things are looking up for us let's go under add modifier and the modifier stack is still too dense for my liking however i do plan to have the st3 system take over all the modifiers and just consolidate them in a all-in-one system thus consolidating all of that once and for all and we can begin getting back to slimming down hops so continuing on now that we've decimated it we've got that fan removed in the center we could go in here and control click bevel in order to add a new bevel so far so good and then we all click sharpen in order to add a weight at normal i'll change this to be a modifier stack so we can at least see what's going on here and i'll um try to get good posture in my chair so i don't you know slouching I gotta remind myself so the next thing from here is um, you know we'll go ahead and use hops it's too easy for me to jump over to box cutter and just let box cutter make all my boxes for me which I'm not complaining but let's just use a little hops for this so for this I will select a single edge and we'll press Q and I'll control click mark which right here we see it doesn't work so I'm gonna right click and we'll apply to scale in object mode and then we'll go in and do this. So anytime I have to have an interruption in a workflow, I see that as something worth notating and also pointing out as something for further workflow refinement, if, in case you ever wonder how it work. So anytime that I find myself pressing a bunch of keys, the, the question is how can we reduce this and end this madness? So right here, I don't want it to go too far. So, you know, maybe something like this actually. And we'll just do a difference. And so far, so good, except for right here. So we could move it down and that'll fix it, which is always the case with Booleans. There's a new Boolean system coming. So I wanted to get this update out there be because I, I feel that we will be ready for it. And we've been preparing for it. Like once coplaners are a thing, we have so many ideas that we plan to put into action for utilizing them to their fullest and also you know, showing Blender how we could definitely use them. So I'll select this and modifier mirror is already activated. We can see it in operator drawing, which the operator drawing is just like a friend in need. So at this point, you know, I would be wanting to also press one to change my auto smooth settings. Maybe something like that. 
and we can actually go in here and shift click smart apply tab into edit mode and just grab this area invert the rest and delete those faces and basically whenever you shift click smart apply it will remove the last bevel and the last weighted normal while applying all the rest of the modifier. So it's like a two way apply. It removes in one way, it, it applies in another way. And what it results in is us being able to just grab this piece very quickly and inset it. So let's just go ahead and fix that one down here. I'm not gonna waste the keystrokes. So we will just go ahead and click this and that is all good. At this point doesn't actually connect to nothing and that's almost there we could probably inset it just a little bit more just to get it real good and then delete it and this is our piece so Q modifier and I don't even bother going all the way up to subdivision it's too much space for me to move my wrist so I just press S because there's an S underscore so I'll just put my mouse like right here and I'll just press S then I'll press two at the top of my keyboard to push solidify out both ways. It's easy for me to tell how deep in it's going by pushing it out the same amount, you know, visually. That's the logic when it comes to me for that. So that piece worked out so far so good. In fact, we'll um, roll that back. And this is what we have. Let's look at this from the top. And, you know, I want to do kind of like a lightning. Oh, I jumped into box cutter again. Got to stop that. So. I mean, I'm not saying box cutters against the rules for this particular challenge. I'll bring it up later when I just can't fight the urge anymore. But there's so much interesting stuff coming to box cutter and I'm excited to be bringing that to y'all very soon. A lot of work has gone into it and everyone is uh, pretty anxious to get it out. Hops was kind of a distraction for it. It was actually supposed to follow the box cutter release but we wanted to really put some extra cherries on this release which is always good my quest personally has been to improve the way that we deal with bugs and also to reduce our failure cases um, if you're able to go in these tools and break them in seconds then you know it's not, it's not a very good tool it's not a very good experience and the experience shouldn't be that way so a lot of the challenges I bring up with the testers is me just kind of showing how I could break a tool in just seconds by just being ridiculous. You know, I actually get a lot of support issues where people will basically deselect the object and then go in edit mode and attempt to box cut. And so I have to write back and I'm like, you know, um, I don't think life works like that. I think actually that's a blender bug. But, you know, people don't want to hear that. They only want a solution. So something must be done. So I'm just mucking around, scaling some shapes. We'll go ahead and union this on. I could use the hotkey, but I just don't feel like reaching, you know? We'll press one to set the profile to 0.5 instead of 0.7. I could change the default, but I do actually like the 0.7 default for a major for a um, variety. In fact, here I was. There I was about to box cut again. Like I said, it's not against the rules, but I think I could get this solenoid done. Just real quick, just getting in here, just, just showing you guys kind of how the solenoid game has changed. And of course, when I'm not trying to narrate and ponder everything I'm doing, it also uh, makes it a little bit easier. However, we are also working on some ideas for conveying even more information on screen and maybe even building lists of that information to kind of let people know what was done over the course of a video. But at this time, that's pretty much all I can say on it until it comes to fruition. I hate to remark on plans before they have surefire success of actually happening. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but I'm very curious and how effective we can make things and educating users and making it where you, you know, I get people that say things like I had to watch this video for five hours, you know, and I look at it, it's like a 15 minute video. It's like, geez, <laughs> I'm giving people prison sentences on YouTube. So my 10 minutes is almost up with this. I mean, I didn't allocate 10 minutes for this, but we could call it 10 minutes, say this was a 10 minute solenoid. So just continuing on right here, the shading breaks down a little. So I'll just press control tilde and we'll just 
tap it with a 15er, you know, and it's good to go. Maybe not a 15er, 15 is a little too strict, maybe a 30, a 13er. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, sorry. Um, it's late at night and I'm pretty loopy. I have been like so crazy about these releases lately. Like my biggest fear is that, you know, I don't get a release out the door or I don't get it out in, in a in a timely fashion. And in this case, you know, there were quite a few delays with getting this release out the door. You know, I, I feel like I was actually turning into Captain Crunch for a moment with, um, you know, the demandingness of getting this thing out to a um, adequate time schedule. But, you know, I look at you guys, the, the customers as the, as the shareholders, and I definitely, you know, if you ever read the sales page, I promise you guys a good show of a tool. I, I want this tool to continue evolving and growing and become something that you'll just be glad over and over again that you purchased. And I believe that that's something that we're able to accomplish. And I think everyone has pretty much the same vision with us as far as um, being on the same page with that. Like that's why, you know, we don't charge for updates or even release additional products because I feel that this single product is it. That's it, hard ops can just do it. And then box cutter is secondary. Box cutter is just kind of a reboot on hops, but with more of a focus on cutting. Hops is more of a workflow assistant. So if you ever wonder what's the difference between the two, you know, also get a lot of people that are like, which one should I buy, hard ops or box cutter? Well, obviously I would say start off with hard ops because it has way more features and fun to be had. However, box cutter, it's just fun in a box. There's no denying it. I fight the urges even now to just click and drag. Just click and drag and make a box, you know. Don't tell anyone I did it, but I do it. Like, I mean, I just keep bringing in these cubes and pressing S and then using a difference. And this thing just, you know, keeps getting more and more detailed as we move along. So what I'll do here is We'll do, we'll go to operations and we'll shift click smart apply, which will just apply everything real quick. And we'll just select that, press control I, remove it. And you know, it's one of those, um, Jesus take the will situations really. So we're just gonna pull this out. And let's look at this from the side. We'll select this for control shift B. And you know, these these are so small of curves, I almost wanna unbevel them, but we don't have an unbeveling solution. I don't even think machine has an unbeveling solution for verts at this time. However, I bet he will after <laughs> after hearing me say this in a video. He's a machine, you know, he's also omnipresent, which can um, make up for his ambiguousness is what we've determined is you can be as ambiguous as needed if he's the type of guy who can appear the moment you say his name i often long for the same sort of omnipresence but it does require that i wear this cursed watch all the time that vibrates and tells me to get out of my chair and leave the computer whenever i'm trying to work so we'll just go in edit mode of this curve that we just converted and just move this over and we'll grab it and mirror it down here and you know that's our quick solenoid so you know this this video these videos have no purpose so we're just going to close that without saving and move on to the next thing so the other thing is a, is, a, is a robot leg so let's hit that up so you know we got our cube right it's just an innocent little cube we'll take this cube as the two and so far so good we'll grab these two faces q mark and marking is going to mark them according to what we have specified in the control tilde. So if you don't have it marking creases, you might want to if you're following this example. But now that we've done that, we can press control three and so far so good. And if we press alt V, we can kind of see what our wireframe's looking like and that's kind of what we have. 
So if we press Q, we can actually go under add modifier and add a lattice. And this is our lattice. So one day I want this thing to jump into a model that will immediately let me behave pretty much the same as dice. I mean, I can almost see it in my head now. However, I gotta watch what I say because people will just start making it now. If I just say, man, I wish I had that. Next thing I know, I'm uh, gonna get an invoice for it. Just kidding. But um, at this time, we are currently on pause now that, except for box cutter, box cutter still has to get out the door. But after that, we are free to play. So here we are, just kind of messing with our lattice. You know, you should remember these stages. And we're gonna go ahead and try to hit it with a decimate. And I was worried Decimate was going to take more than that. And first we'll just put a big bevel on it. So I must add that whenever you see me, you know, working non-destructively, it's kind of non-destructively, you know, with quotations. If my hands weren't on the keyboard and the mouse per Blender guidelines, uh, you would see me making air quotations like I was right there. And also right here, activate the box. So box cutter, just great hardly any complaints just kidding I have an entire book of complaints about box cutter about how I want it to be and what I want box cutter to become but that's only because I, can, I see so much of box cutter I think it could be the ultimate cutting tool the ultimate concept fun time 3d tool so one of the features I didn't get to talk to in the release video that probably should hear is if we press Q and we just scroll back through our mods we have our modifier I mean we have our um, bull shape here let's say I actually wanted to bring it back but I don't want the same one I actually want to duplicate it so if we hover over uh, wireframe you can see what it says or actually shade solid sorry uh, control or shift will duplicate and make it solid so if we shift click it we now have this piece so we could just final geometry to mesh or to geometry and now we can just scale this in and, it, and it's just that easy, except for the fact that this probably needs to be moved back to the main collection when you do that. But like I said, don't do not do anything. Just just thinking out loud here. So we'll dissolve these. You know, they're just little mishaps. And we'll just add a bevel here. And then we'll control click bevel to add another bevel, but at a 30 degree level. So that'll grab both sides. And I'm almost so tired I can't focus, um, but our work must go on. If we look at our face orientation, you can see that some stuff got flipped. Things didn't work out here, so we'll shift in on that. And we'll actually bring this shape back. And let's see what we have here. We want to flip, and now we have all blue, daba dee daba die. And We'll turn off overlays, or actually, we'll turn on overlays, but turn off wireframe. So that way we can see what's going on here. And we're just gonna have a little fun here. Just slicing this out. And of course the fade's just looking like a darling. Love the fade so much. I'm glad fade's now a part of hard ops as well. It's something that I wanted for quite a while. So right here, orientation gets tough. And also mirroring is gonna be needed so we don't not look at eyesore on both sides. If we do a mod scroll and roll backwards, we can actually grab this cutter and move it just right so it no longer has an error. And I'll press Shift V in box cutter to bring up the view orientation menu, just so we can set it to view. this from the front here and we just want to do a cut similar to this and here we are kind of with our uh, simple v1 bot leg so far so we'll also take a circle here and we probably want to turn on turning it back to object so we can snap to it and you can see how much of a 
not cylinder I got when working with it in a previous step. I could, probably could have put a cast in a cylinder in here in order to get it to come out the way that I was probably desiring, but this will do. Gives us a more organic look. So right here, that didn't work out. So mod scroll, roll backwards to grab that last mod and just make a few small adjustments. Of course, you could ignore these things and just let them stack up till the end of the model. But I recommend against doing that. If you deal with it as you go, it definitely will re result in uh, a more sane model and less of a chance of your modifiers just going haywire for this piece. We'll actually switch back to circle and jump off of this thing and jump here and do a little circle. And that's about it there. So another thing we can also do here is we can shift click and just drop a square or a cube. And I want to actually grab this cutter and use this cursor as a jump off point And so right here, if we control click the classic radial array, we can still array around a 3D cursor, which is essential for being able to get these radial arrays right where you need it. And unfortunately we did lose this with the ST3 array. However, I'll be going over that more in depth in a uh, future video. However, at this time we're just kind of just, it's like a boss rush in a video game. We're just, just running through this, just modeling all the classics from these last tutorials that people seem to, you know, be indicating to have a little difficulty with. So I'm not getting, I'm not making fun of anyone for having difficulty with the older tutorials. I'm only saying that I might have been a bad teacher. And so here I am not doing any better. But look at this like a refresher. So I could have made a two cylinder from this thing instead of doing it like this, you know, old habits die hard. And I got to think in terms of, do I actually want a shape in the size of another shape instead of, do I need a cube? And how am I going to scale this cube down to the size? So we'll clean the mesh right here and draw a box. And then right here, we'll draw another one. And voila. So, so far so good. If we Alt V and we look at what our wireframes look like, we're getting something like that. So the next thing from here is to actually shift click Smart Apply in order to get a derived mesh. I believe I talked about this in a previous video about how I want wanted to get derived meshes and play with them. I believe in the sci-fi gate one. And so this is us actually Getting a little bit closer. All right, we'll press Control I, delete every face except the ones that I had. I'll have to take a break and drink some water. I'm just dying, you guys, of just dry mouth and itchy face and Corona fear. So we select this face we, you know, hit S for solidify because I ain't got time to move my mouse another two inches up the stack that we've created. And so one of these verts hath betrayed us. And you know what it does is we actually put it on the wrong side. So if we press control M X, now it's actually on the right side. And now from here, we can go ahead and do a uh, bull shift where we shift this into another type of Boolean. And then just using Ngon, we can get in here and work it. So things are definitely progressing in that regard. And so we'll draw a box from the front, press X to switch it to a slice.
So right here we'll rotate a plane. And right here we'll perform a slash. And now we're right where we need to be. And we bring up the pull, solidify. And with our front piece here, we'll just slice a little bit out. Somehow I ended up a little bit lost in thought. Sometimes when I'm modeling, I'll just be pondering things like the tools or what's needing to be done with them or even the person behind them. So many personalities behind so many features that Hops is like a memory book for me of just meeting various coders and having mysteries solved. Most of those mysteries solved by proxy and they are, um, but more and more of them are, are getting solved. And you know, with every addition to the team, it just becomes more, more interesting as we, as we move along. This was something that I never thought would have, would have lasted, but it's definitely the, the viewers that have kept this tool going so long and, and sharing it and telling other people to look into it just has been so helpful to us. I'm truly thankful for the users and their support to show that not only could such a thing work, it could be able to self-sustain and continue going and also expand to include others. So right here, this shape's not looking so good. We should talk about it. Let's go under wireframe. Let's take it in loco mode to quote Pablo and We'll just collapse all these mods. And the first thing I'll do is add a weld. And let's step back, look at it and get out of wireframe. Let's go back and look at weld. So weld, not weld, weld, not weld. This is why I need weld to become a modal, but we'll be getting back to you with that in the next update. Just kidding, I gotta stop um, doing suggestions in my videos for myself. Uh, someone will pick up on it, but it does look so much better once you put a weld on this thing. And so now we come back to this, we can actually get a little bit further. And so right here, what's going on there? Let's see if there's anything that can be done for that. So let's go in here and add another weld. You know, it'll tell anyone that you know, my solutions all involve the weld modifier. And let's alt click that and alt V wireframe. And that's what looks like pre weld or post weld. That's what looks like pre weld. So we'll go with the post weld world. So, so far so good with our little boot here. And so now we can just bring down a cube. Sorry, it's, it's, it's incredibly late. I should actually be asleep. Um, I'm telling you, I've just been up so late these last couple of days and, and sleeping little um, all because this this work must go on. So for this one, we're going to try something a little bit different than the last foot. So we'll pull that one in. We'll push this out. Maybe we'll bevel it in order to round it. Something like that. And we're just going to bevel this one. So I actually have a book sitting on my desk that I've been looking at for days, just about um, modeling human anatomy because humans is, a curiosity of mine is something I definitely have am wanting to get better at and I've been practicing it kind of as a hobby to robots you know like something else to you know practice on the side you know maybe birds too I think birds could be cool I have had people that model birds have a fun time with it you know so here we are with our boot so far we'll just start creasing it up to make it logical And then we'll do a pass on the top. All right. 
and there we are so far. I'll even grab this area here. We'll go ahead and mark that as well. And things are looking fairly blocky with this, which I'm hoping that, you know, if you've been spending some time with hops, you've been taking advantage of like the dicing and latticing because my goal is definitely not to be working in such a blocky fashion. And I hope that you aren't either. I mean, blocks are just kind of a, a test shape, uh, like a constraint form. If you can make a cube sexy, then you can make anything sexy, given your weld modifier treats you right. All right, so I took a quick break, had a Capri Sun, still liquid cool, even in quarantine. So I'm back in action, feeling slightly refreshed, you know, don't ask why I drink Capri Suns. They're just fun. They're fun, <laughs> they're fun to drink. Uh, what else can I say? So I'm just shaping this foot here, you know, real basic stuff, not even trying anything too hard here might fix that flow a little bit just so it transitions a little better but really doesn't matter we'll grab this face here pull it back and you know so far so good do i want to loop all the way through there probably not since this is going to be going the way that we're going to send it let's just cut it like so So there is no defined time limit um, in total for this thing. So if this is like a two hour video, you know, you should just leave if you got to go do something. You know, I never hold a cat to your head and tell you to stay meow. Sorry, I'm terrible. But, you know, that's what happens when you get me on here late at night. You get cat jokes. Also, I was uh, planning on getting a cat, but viral outbreaks got me afraid of cats you know there's a chance that you know maybe even bats are bad pets right now you know from what I heard people probably shouldn't be having bats for pets or especially for dinner you know we'll crease that one which means we also crease that one and we'll press Q and add a modifier lattice and we could just shape it to our desires so we just want to bring this down a little bit just make it look a little bit cooler maybe bring in the hill in retrospect which means we bring this part in. Lattices is one of my favorite things, which is why I'm so proud of the work that's been done with Lattice over the last couple of releases. There wasn't anything done with Lattice for this release, but there also weren't any requests for Lattice for this release. Um, I pretty much wanted it to just fit around my shape and let me just Lattice multiple things at the same time. It's not rocket science and now it's possible. So I'm really proud of Lattice. We'll go in here and actually grab these points and just bring this down, maybe elongate the boot just a little bit and pull out, just kind of see what we got here. It's kind of some big clobbers, some big stompers about to go to the club. All right, and so far so good. So we're back looking at this from the side. I would S sharp this but I can guarantee you that sharpening it would actually sharpen things we didn't want to sharpen, like right here and right here, right here, which doesn't matter. We could just go and just get those out of here. But whenever I talk to people about sharpening and what it is, I just try to tell them that sharpen is like a hard surface smooth. And so, so far so good. Got to minimize this core to avoid getting distracted. And now let's get in here and get to work. So shift V, change our orientation of view. And we're just gonna go ahead and just cut that out. And then we'll roll it back, get our shape, and let's shift click this. And then shift S, origin to geometry, which first we got a visual geometry matched in origin to geometry, and then we could scale this in. 
And I was about to delete it, which, as you would guess, was a mistake. So what do I want to do? I want to take this, select this, select this, control L. Let's see, object data. Nope. But do I want to do that is the question. What I do want to do is possibly, you know, I'll actually shift D and then go in here, smart apply it, which will apply six mods, but leave one, which is the last bevel. You know, smart apply comes in handy with those stats, at least for me. That's why I knew that I was pretty much done with the stats. I was the one that actually worked on the stat system, had so much help to get the stats to be in there the way I wanted with making things query. So I wouldn't be surprised if someone happens to find a bug and come to report it back to us because, you know, anytime, it, anytime a bug's pointed out, it's because either I was involved or I was involved, but you know, half the time or, or proxy was involved, you know, he was getting a little sloppy with some bugs for a minute there, but we'll blame it on unusually large amounts of work fatigue caused by working with me. I'm telling you, um, the process of creating hops cutter can create some, um, crunchy situations. So that's why I feel that breaks are important. Um, you know, I watch a lot of videos online about the game industry and they're like, you know, the studio was tormented by terrible amounts of crunch due to mismanaged expectations. And I, I just like stop and I'm like, oh my God, is that me? Did that happen to me? Am I part of a, am I a crunch company? I don't want that to happen. So just know that I'm mindful of it and I'm constantly asking if, um, you know, you need a break would you like a break would you like to give up on this task because you know crunching people definitely is is no way to curate passion in a project we'll mirror this over to the other side and it looks like we were able to get that in there just right just creating a nice little quick boot you know nothing serious here in fact if we look at this in the back we can see a couple of notches here those notches are actually from the auto smooth not being um, hard enough. So now we actually got this about where we would want. However, we could always take this further. So depending on what I should do with this right here, I guess one thing I could do is, you know, let's just smart apply it. And we'll just L grab that S Z flatten it you know sometimes there's a point in which being non-destructive just doesn't matter to me as much as being able to complete the model right here I added a bevel and we also see that a little bit of weld will be needed or just dissolve and over here we just got three points that just didn't make it however if we were to bring in a weld we could definitely get these things to connect better. And let's look at that to see how they do. So there's too much geometry right now, but if we move it up a level, then we can get it actually making these connections. And so before I do any cutting, I actually want to lock this mod so that the boolean we place is before this, but after the weld, just to ensure there's no geometric issues. So we'll just do a cut here, slice, maybe alt click to put a weighted normal on this thing at this point. And we'll bring back our last cutter through the mod scroll. So that's one of the reasons why this option is so prominent in the Q-Mini. As I used it, I realized that mod scroll was way more important than I was letting on. It's probably one of the most crucial tools ever because the more you do booleans, the more you're gonna be needing it to troubleshoot your process. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut some pieces out here. I'm just kind of um, thinking on the fly. So let's look at this one. And it looks like we just need a little bit of a nudge. Sometimes accu cuts just a little too accu. I argue a lot about it internally. I'm like, look, here's another situation of, AccuCut just being a little too accurate. 
maybe just needing a little bit of extra fat to ensure that the cut always makes it over across the surface. But I digress. I should stop talking about tool improvements. I'm telling you, uh, all, everything I complain about becomes a request for someone else. So looking at this thing, it appears to be coming along quite well. So we'll shift S, put our cursor here, and we'll just bring in a cube. And of course we gotta cut a tongue in the front here. So I'm just gonna grab these two edges. And first we gotta apply the scale. If we don't apply the scale, it's not gonna come out looking very good. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the scale. And then we'll go ahead and perform our operation here that we're going for, which is this. And I see that we're at the 40 minute mark, which means that we did kind of uh, cut in a little far with this, I believe. The first object we gave like 15 minutes, which means that I probably gave this thing like 30 minutes, which I'll be up all night at that rate. You guys don't care. You don't care if I'm up all night. You're like, stay up, stay up all night with us. No, I'm out of here. Girlfriend hates me. She probably hates a hops cutter because of my dedication to the tool. I catch her making comments all the time like, well, you're always working. It's like, you yeah, know, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> but, you know, she's right. I am always working and shouldn't be that way. You know, when people are ready to auto cancel plans, that's when you're probably a little too into tools. So right here, I could fix it by lowering the bevel, but it's easier just to just to auto smooth. Sometimes you just have to make a choice if you want your cut to be shown up in the bevel or is it just something that's just so important you just need to auto smooth to it to its level and we see that that's maybe a little too far so probably auto smooth to like 20 that will do so here we are this is our bot leg so far this piece here let's just put a cube up here i believe last time i had a cube you thought i was going to just in, in this portion of the video, no, we are going to complete this thing. So this piece was interesting. I remember doing it. You, we would have to put an edge down the middle and then you could actually do one of these numbers. I'm pretty sure in the original video, I just mirrored it across to the other side because that was probably easier. We could also shift click to resharp, but it's still going to mark these two as sharp. So if we unmark them as sharp, it gets rid of that seam marking, but I'm such a stickler for old habits. And you can also see that it starts to get a little bit problematic, but we can, we can make this make sense. So let's see. We'll just draw an ink on here while holding control and then draw a box here. There we go. So the next thing from here is to select these and control click mark in order to roll these around and make them rounded. And if we go ahead and adjust the bevel, we can see that the bevel isn't where we want it, but as we roll it up the stack, it starts to actually give us the result that we want. So we lower our sharpness and that is actually where we want to go. So the process of moving the bevel up and down the stack has definitely gotten a lot easier. And so let's say we want to actually do that to the other side because we're weird. Because also, you know, let's show you, let's show you that step one more time. So right here, I control click mark, except this time we're creating a chamfer. So if we go in object mode, that thing disappeared. And it's not my fault. It's because, you know, when you bevel a vertex group, it needs to stay at the top of your stack or else it gets destroyed. So now bevels where I need it to be, just like that, able to kind of deal with resort on the fly. So this has given me an idea for a tool that I asked for that was I was told that it couldn't exist. And now I asked about it earlier. However, I asked about it, I think correctly. And the answer was that it was possibly more feasible. So, We'll actually go ahead and uh, do a visual transform the mesh. 
Well, let's grab this and actually bring it in, which creates like a kind of a double angle situation going on there. But I think we'll be able to make it. And we could just go in here, bring a circle in, bring another circle in, maybe bring it out the other side just for kicks. And this is our bot leg so far. So that's us just going through and kind of making the classic bot leg. I could go through and show you guys how um, we would handle the tire now, but the next. So the next demo in the queue is the host demo. So this one is a little bit of a classic. So we'll look at it in the top view, scale this cube in, bring it out a little bit and maybe control A, all transforms and alt W start box cutter and cutting from the side is just my idea of a good time. I tell you, this is my favorite cut. I just can't get over the feeling of just watching this cut just work its way into a surface. Sometimes I don't even want to go so far. Also, I do always want to press Alt V and jump over to EVHQ because without that, it's just terrible. So, so far so good. We're just getting in here, creating our shape. In fact, we'll avoid circles for the purposes of this dice. I don't want to have to be fighting circle proportions just yet. However, right here, we will put a few notches of interest, just taking advantage of general angle snap. And you know what? We want to bring back this last shape because I want to use a box to cut that off. That wasn't actually good enough. And then we'll press control M to mirror that. And now we have an interesting little segment happening there. We'll use modifier mirror since it tells me I'm already on that mode. And that's where I want to be. So we'll just perform a cut there. And a couple more angle cuts here. And so far so good. This shape will serve our needs very nicely. And put a little visual interest in here just to um, grab grab the eye. You know, anytime you have trenches on the inside of your model, it's a nice idea to just do a few cuts to just expose some areas that are showing. So we'll press Q and under mesh tools, we see that by alt clicking dice, we can bring up smart dice unless you have dice just defaulting to smart apply. And we'll just perform a knife project here. And now from here, we'll go ahead and perform a twist 360. And we want to bring it in, but we don't want to stretch it too bad, but we don't want to give it too many segments either. It looks kind of cool on low segments, something like that. However, if we go into edit mode, we can see that there is a face over on this side that must be deleted. And if we Alt X, we can put that face on the other side, which will result in a better model. So. Right here, we could go through and just click up, 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 but really, let's not do that. Instead, what we'll do is use modifier scroll and shift drag this all the way up to the top. Just shift scroll that all the way up. So I can't get over that feature. It's one of my favorites. And guess who added it? Me. So if you don't like it, it's because I did it. I'm, I'm no coder. But I keep trying, you know, I see everybody coding and having such a good time and everyone's so knowledgeable in it that I can't stop asking them questions. So I think one of these days I'm actually going to make it, make a breakthrough and actually become a coder. I'm serious, but the more that I'm not a coder, the more I am an artist. So right here, I'm trying to actually add a, add an additional bevel to this, but for some reason, I guess it wasn't selected. And then we'll go on with circle and perform one of these cuts. However, that's not good enough. We need to actually perform that cut, but pause it with tab, press control D, and do we want it at 64? Probably not. And right here, we'll do the same. And let's scroll through.
So what we could do now is I'll just scroll and bring back this shape and we'll just use something like to shape in order to convert it to a box. However, maybe we don't want a box. So I'll press F9 and we'll convert this into a cylinder. However, we want it to actually equalize and fit the, let's see, it feels like that's a little big. What was selected? You know, I'm pretty sure there is a fault there, but I might be too tired. Also, I'm, I'm still in tester mode. I'm not trying to do any immediate updates right now. So I'll review the footage later and make sure there wasn't something strange happening there. So right here, I'm going to just draw a box and we'll bring it down ever so slightly. Shift to live. And we'll take this opportunity to go under mesh tools and control click on radial array to give it a few radial turns. And that is the top of our host so far. For this shape, auto smooth got a little bit lost here. So the shape isn't translating as we would want, but now we're able to bring that back. So, so far so good. That's the bottom of our hose or the top of it. In fact, we can actually go in here and use something like smart apply. And we use something like smart apply here too. And that's done. You know, we could take both of these and join them together. However, it's not going to like these areas that we're seeing here. So we will need to shift and flip some normals and that should get us in a little bit better shape. However, this is now the top of our hose here that we're just kind of, you know, goofing off here, just in our boss rush video here. I guess I'm saying here. <laughs> GZ1. And we'll bring this up too. And how do we want to do this? We want to make it curve on a curve, like a curvy curve? Sure. So we inserted a curve, and I'll press RX90 GX, hold control to snap it to the center. And there's our curve. So we have our object here and we'll bring up array and I haven't had an opportunity to use array, but we'll tap into the expansive UI version. So that way I can just show you guys how I use it because, you know, more likely everyone using this is going to have questions on how to actually use this particular array. So let's see, control X, clear to access offset. And we want to put it on Z and adjust the offset by one and we're done. Actually, we um, canceled it incorrectly. So control X, X, two, click in the viewport and we're done. That's all there was to it. So kind of a lot of hotkeys right there, but we'll be going back and revisiting that as we go. So right here, We'll go ahead and set it to be on the Z axis. And this is our result so far. All right, so this one is cylinder. We will go ahead and just set our start cap to object name cylinder, which is right here. Sorry, exhaustion keeps peeking through. I'm almost through. I'm sure you, the viewer, are just as tired as I am. So we have one of them and it's correct. But the other one just has no chance. So we're going to need to make accommodations or else mistakes will be made. So let's move this one over. Shift D, Control M, Z. And so now the cylinder is 002. Let's try that.
Alright, let's apply the scale. That one gets messed up. This is the one that we we need to flip. So now we have both of them correct. And we can actually get in here and bend our curve as needed to adjust our hose if needed, of course. Everybody likes a dynamic hose. And so now the last thing for this is to first get in here and weld it because otherwise it'll just look terrible. We shift D cancel and then let's remove the cylinder end caps. Tap into edit mode. And so right here, what we want to do is actually let's leave it. I bet we can solve this with modifiers. So let's turn on wireframe and this is what we have. This is what we want. So we'll go in, get decimate, unsubdivide and hit it with one level of unsubdivide, which will get us this. And so we could curve mesh it, but believe me, that won't, we won't live as long as if we, then if we just put a wireframe on it, getting us the result that we want. And this curve is just not visible enough. So we will go under viewport display and put on in front. And now we can actually look at this hose. So I mean, a good hose is something that you always need. So it would be kind of cruel for me to close this file without saving after making such a nice little hose. I mean, a hose shouldn't take very long to make, especially this one. But I mean, this is something that I would be trying to put in the neck of a character. Of course, you know, when you have the um, modifiers going on that you do, certain kinking in the neck can get very problematic. So be sure to keep that in mind. You can probably see a little bit of that popping up here. But with that, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next example. All right, I'm only quitting because I'm a girl and because I'm tired. Also, no offense to women out there. Don't mean it that way. I'm just saying that I'm getting <laughs> so tired. Uh, it's like three in the morning um, and I've been up since like seven and this release is finally out. I'm just checking to make sure no one's complaining very loud. I hate to go to sleep and find out that a release is a disaster when I wake up. So I'm just waiting to find out if it's a disaster or not. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like everything's fine. Also, we went through a lot of testing. So why am I talking about this? Sorry. So for a final test, you know, I'm looking at the uh, smart box demo I did and I'm thinking, wow, that's a cool box. I haven't went to Box City in so long. So let's do that. Let's uh, just do a real quick test of Box City. So Box City to me is like a tool test. Um, it's not supposed to be how you spend your whole day. It's supposed to just be kind of, you know, you don't eat cereal all day. You just eat cereal for breakfast. And that's what this is. This is breakfast. Um, unless you want breakfast all day. You know, I'm not going to judge you. Um, it's your product. You do whatever you want with it once you have it. But I do recommend that, you know, once you get past the initial box that you go on to more challenging endeavors because there's so many mysteries of modeling that are out there to solve. And every time you get better at solving one, it makes you better as an artist. And so a lot of my personal work time I like to spend just kind of pursuing mysteries uh, of of modeling and topology and things like that so hopefully I can get around to doing some content about that in the future but I definitely want to do stuff emphasizing about subdivision modeling because I feel that it's misunderstood you know I don't want people to think that I'm actually against subdivision modeling I feel that you know, in the event of failure, you should always fall back to the fundamentals. And in this case, subdivision modeling is kind of the fundamentals of modeling. Like you can pretty much model anything if you have a proper edge flow. Meanwhile, anything that does have a proper edge flow is going to be a little bit of a struggle. And I'm sure anyone who's been um, modeling curve shapes can probably tell that, which makes me want to um, something about that in a more focused manner. Hard ops is more of a um, hard surface focused workflow kind of at the time. But I've always thought about 
uh, going in a slightly different direction with an alternative approach in a different thread altogether. Maybe even um, make something that helps, uh, say, automotive modeling or spacecrafts or uh, something that can, a tool that can literally become a study of becoming better at something in a way. Because hard ops has been a study of me personally uh, getting better at hard surface. I was kind of mediocre, I'd say, at the beginning of this. And previous to meeting AR, AR definitely showed me the way, which is why I still try to work with him even now. And Proxy has proven to be fully capable of taking ideas and turning them into a finished product that I'm able to sit back and admire and use, which is a very unique and very valuable skill to me because, you know, there's so many ideas I get, I just have no clue on how we would even go about accomplishing it. And there used to be a time when, you know, ideas that were that level would actually just get written down. And I would just ask micro questions about how to accomplish it until I had enough answers to truly understand why it couldn't be done or to finally explain properly what it was I wanted in a way it could be done or dial it back a level to something feasible. You know, there's all sorts of uh, different approaches when it comes to uh, executing an idea. You know, sometimes it you can cook an idea on paper, which is something I talk about quite often, is, you know, sometimes I'll write down a, a plan on paper and just plan it out and strategize, move it around like chess pieces, kind of as it, while it's written before it even becomes a task. So, I mean, all those thoughts I brought up over tool improvements, those are now going to be kind of kind of rolling thoughts for what would be the next hops from here because the the big thing that I had everybody waiting for and, and kept saying, hey, I can't wait for this was very much the ST3 work. And I'm very proud that we were finally able to get out of the door because, you know, the longer these things go on, the more it seems like I'm the, uh, I am the jerk, but really I only want to get this out to the quality that I know you guys expect and write about and complain about and refund about. So I'll do anything to prevent that sort of um, issue before it happens when it comes to a release. So we have our shape. Let's look at what the blank material lottery gave us. And geez Louise, every color is a freaking winner. Dizam, you know, that's not something that happens. You usually don't end up with a with a full Monty. <laughs> I'm gonna start coming up with terms for blank materials. You know, right here, that's a uh, that's, that's a full house right there. With every material you get's a winner. So whenever you add a glass, it'll always look a little odd. But what I found is that if you put a solidify and you just push it in, maybe turn off the rim, it'll come out looking pretty good. And I might have to even do one more model after this because, you know, a cube is such a in and out, you know, I'm not, I'm not even trying to brag. If you're looking at this and you're like, wow, I will never get there. Believe me, this is a cube and this is a test. And this is how I test the tools every morning, even before I eat breakfast. Well, without breakfast, just skip it only boxes for me I'm telling you it's such a unhealthy way to live like sometimes I wonder <laughs> how we'd look if there's like a documentary about the development process behind the scenes It'd be like me waking up out of bed and running away from my girlfriend to get on the computer jumping out of bed being like proxy what, what, what happened to his task I gotta find out what happened because you know I'm a taskmaster my goal is to Make sure to task it done no matter what. And as long as they're getting done, everything's smooth. But when there's delays, then things become a little less smooth. So now we'll go ahead and start adding bevels to this. Maybe add a bevel here. Just something casual. Maybe add a bevel here. And we'll just dial this back. And I'll click that. And we'll go ahead and um, control shift click that, bring that back and I'll click that. And everything on this cube is pretty, pretty golden, you know? Also my watch is beeping so much. I'm just ignoring it because I want to finish this. 
So we'll press Alt M and do a blank material, except this time we'll hit F9 and I'll set it to a mission. I recently got a new mouse. I was previously using this Razer MMO mouse, but it's the worst mouse on freaking planet Earth. You know, I see Razer talking about toasters. You know what they can't make are mice. It's the worst mice. And I have like five of these mice because I was in love with the mouse. I wanted it to work out, but it just did not. So let's go to an Icosphere and we'll just switch that over. And this is what we have so far. And so let's go down here. And what I want is a box in this area. So Q O T except we'll bring up the F9 and we want individual, well, no, maybe equalized, no, maybe not modified. So all of these will take the mirror into account. But I'm pretty sure we had a case previously where we had one that was not taking mirror into account. So just another one of those things added to my invisible list. However, it's not a very visible list. It's a very real list because if you're on it, you'll, uh, you're receiving pictures of it letting you know, hey, these list items are on you. These holdups are pending because of you. Pressure is mounting on you. Your task has become overdue. You know, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a taskmaster. I'm, I'm warning you guys. You know, and we actually want to give it the same material as the other one here for pulsing. And we'll go ahead and turn on bloom through the hops, hops down is what we'll call it in this case. Just just branding everything today, I see. So this is our Q, and let's just press Q and just add a camera. And you can see that I added a camera of two revolutions, and I can press numpad zero to look at my camera. And that's it, just a quick 10 minute, just cube exercise to just kind of pop the knuckles, just simmer down for tonight. And you know, cutting up this cube has almost given me the strength to go through one more boss rush round. All right, so for the ending of this video, I figured we'd go with a classic, and that is the Spherical. Spherical Eye demo is the one I'm looking at on the side here. So we'll just go ahead and just jump into Sphericast. Maybe give it four levels of subdivision. Still haven't added an F6 for Sphericast yet, I see. But that's my fault. So we'll go ahead and visual geometry to mesh. Look at this from top view. Alt W and we'll just do a cut here and then we'll make a circle and do another circle except for this one we'll bevel it inwards and I accidentally added an array so we'll press V and get rid of that I have to press V twice and I also want to press Alt V jump over to EVHQ the only reason I start out in LQ is because I love seeing this drawing for jumping into HQ I know it's terrible but old habits so right here what I'll do is shift click on smart apply and for smart apply what I'll do is for this smart apply I'll inset it which will let me grab this loop press control I delete everything that isn't that loop we'll pull it that one way pull it two ways and I actually could have used extrude on that, but I'm not trying to play games right now. So we'll just give a solidify to it and cut that inwards. And we'll do the same thing. Do the same thing right here. So now looking at it from the top, We'll go ahead and just draw a box, but we want to make sure it's selected. It's easy to make that mistake. And now we can bevel it. And so right here, coming out looking good. And the next thing from here is I will go ahead and use a sphere, spherical empty and we'll select this, select the empty alt X, mirror it over. And what this means now is that we can rotate it like so. We can also take this, grab the empty and mirror it one more time. Multi mirror on emptying just isn't supported yet. It's something I've been asking about, but will require a little bit of planning. Mirror in itself is a bit of a thing even though mirror is the consolidation of all of our mirrors 
I feel that Mirror is just begging for a redo, um, a, a next level redo. I think we can redo the idea of interactive Mirror even better one more time. So looking at this from the front, we're just going to create a trench here. And of course, Auto Smooth will break us. So let's lower our Auto Smooth down to 15. And things are looking pretty good so far. You know, we'll put one of these down here, maybe press one to put it on the other side. And we see that we triggered repeat shape. So let's actually try that again. And so for some reason, shifting the live didn't actually break it. So that's one of the things that I still feel that we could improve on is our repeat uh, shift system and, and separating those settings out a little bit more so they make sense to users. Right here, I'll want to scroll that back and visual geometry to mesh. Alt X. And so far, so good. However, this piece could use a little bit of mirror adjustment. So we'll roll that back. And we actually want to mirror it across what it's going to be cutting into, which is kind of weird, but I'm glad it works out. So here's what we have for our spherical eye so far. So the next thing from here is we'll go ahead and add a UV sphere. And I would take it in local mode and dance with it, but just I just know that it's not going to work. Something about local mode right now is just kryptonite to box cutter. And you know, hopefully we'll rectify that in the next release, but just let you know that it is something I'm aware of and have been kind of uh, noticing lately. In case you're wondering if I'm purposefully avoiding that, uh, going into edit mode to work on this, the answer is yes. So right here, We'll hover over this and press S to solidify inward. And now we can actually go and do a few in-gone cuts. Now that we've given it some thickness, also lower the auto smooth to maybe something like 30. All right, shift V. And so right here, and we'll just mirror this over to the other side. Sorry, uh, slightly lost in thought there. So we'll go ahead and just shift click smart apply here. And that'll give us a clone smart apply, you know, if it didn't tell us it did it, you wouldn't know it happened. So I'm quite proud of the operator text, or at least in its ability to convey some information across to you to users. So I'm hoping that you are finding it useful because my goal is to spend less time talking about hotkeys. It's so crazy. It makes me don't not want to do videos. I'm like, uh, if I have to talk about only hotkeys, then what am I doing? I don't even want to do a video if I have to talk about hotkeys all day. So I'm trying to work on a way to get that information across while just being able to talk freely. You know, I'd like to talk to y'all about, you know, Toasts of London. Uh, if anybody likes the show, you know, holler at me, let's be friends. So right here, this thing looks terrible. Let's weld it. So weld is okay in the F6 or the F9 there, except it really doesn't let you drag it with the grace that you need. Also, this double curve cut, you know, is possibly just too much for this dainty little plane. And what I mean by that is, uh, let's go ahead and just control click to turn modifiers off. And we're just going to put two levels of subdivision. And if we look at our mod scroll here, we're not able to actually get to the last one at the end here. 
So let's try it again with we'll shift this time. And we're just going to control grab that and move it all the way up the stack like so. So now we actually have a better result and that's really the power of subdivision. So without subdivision, we get something like this where we're going to be fighting it with weld and it's not going to work out. But one of the uh, biggest answers that AR ever gave to me that I would still argue with them about, about the validity is to solve cuts, you have to give it more geo to, for a cut to work. You, you can't have the butter be thinner than the knife. And I, I ponder it all the time because I'm like, how do we break this rule? How do we make, um, how do we prove them wrong? But AR is probably right there. So, so far, so good. Everything's looking good. We can actually go ahead and think about doing a radial array, which will give us this. All right, and we also can go in here and use late parent, which means that we parented four cutters out of four, meaning that every cutter is parented. RX90. And we'll just scale this into fit. And there we are with our eyeball, except, you know, might want to scale it out. I'm not sure, just kind of thinking out loud here. Didn't have a plan when I came in here. Just wanted to just do one more cyber eye before I called it a night. So we'll just scale this plane down. In fact, let's move it over. And this is for the area that's going to be going around the eye. So Shift V will change back to object for this. And we'll do one cut here. And that's looking so good so far. I mean, real simple, but you know, I'm kind of thinking about in terms of what it's going to be in just a moment when I dice and twist it. And we'll shift V to switch back to view, which will let us actually just draw this on the shape, but still orient to view. And sometimes I feel like this point isn't completely uh, clarified when it comes to general box cutter usage. So there's a whole type of information system I'm thinking about. However, box cutter is su such a tool of rules that I think we can solve box cutter and basically any tool we ever wanted to assist through hard ops alone by creating a system uh, extending on st3 for uh, tutorial assistance so there will come a time when i think uh, tutorials with me will will be a lot easier because based on the problems that i hear and the comments that i get it's definitely something that i'm curious and seeing if we could solve uh, you know if you complain enough i will seek a solution or at least ask around about one. And we got some interesting ideas cooking. So with this piece, I'm going to go ahead and just alt click dice. And we'll just dice that. And then we'll twist it. And that's what we have so far. Our X90. Maybe something like that, except we want to go back into radial array. Let's try it again. And it appears radial array at this time is capable of adding more than one array in its in this process, which is something that probably sends us back to the drawing board for that one. So uh, out of this entire tool test of a one hour boss rush, you know, one hour plus boss rush, uh, hardly ran into any issues with this. So 
you know, for something having such a long prep time, I think we actually did pretty good on this release. However, you, the customer, are always the judge because the squeaky wheels are always the ones that we end up using to, you know, reflect and base this release off of. So here we have our shape. However, another thing I want to try is uh, let's shift click and go through modifier scroll. And I actually want to try at this point using shift click on smart apply to get this piece, which success, it worked. And we'll shift tilde in order to use a select loops boundary loop, which I have mapped to shift tilde. And we'll just grab these pieces here. And we'll control I, remove the rest. And this was all I was wanting was this area. So I could cut a wedge like so. I know, kind of a lot of work just to get that. And let's shift in which anytime you have marks not getting marked right is because your uh, mesh probably has flipped normals. So right here we can actually just cut that off, but it'll need some solidification of course. People always make the mistake of trying to perform these sort of operations without having everything set up right. But here you can see that this is about how good and streamlined that process can go. So this piece could be scaled. It also could be angled. So something like that. And now we have our bot eye. However, it's not complete. We press Q and we go under mesh tools and we activate something like sphere cast and you know press q or actually alt m and let's go under blank material and we'll use the f9 to set it to glass and the glass is built to automatically look good in the viewport which is something i find crucial viewport materials have to look good in the viewport and i mean even if that's a random color that color is better than nothing um better you have to know where you put your material in object mode and that is a problem that I find sometimes uh, with certain material kits out there that uh, not having viewport colors can definitely be problematic. So I recommend anyone dealing with materials, you know, just, just do the material groups. It makes everybody happier. And I see here that we kind of erased our eyes history here. So maybe something like Something like that. And let's take a look at what we have here. And this is our bot eye. We look at it in the render. This is our result. In fact, we can select this piece in the middle, Alt M, blank material, F9, give it an emission. Select this. Uh, we don't want to give that an emission, even though it does look very cool. But something like that will suffice. And then for this one, we'll actually give this one a uh, new blank material and we'll just roll through the scroll on it. So in case you're wondering how I'm able to hit somebody's hotkeys so fast, it's because I got a new mouse that has actually got like haptic feedback, but the hotkeys are just nuts on this thing. I love this mouse. Uh, another reason I wanted to get this release out is because I got a new mouse. So I'm just really happy to have a mouse that isn't you know, requiring me blow it. Uh, you know, I don't know if I talked to you guys about blowing mice, but if your mouse is making you blow it, you should just get another mouse. Less as a quarantine, and then in which case you gotta blow your mouse for dear life. Just blow the mouse. It's the easiest way. Otherwise, your mouse is trying to put your life on the line. So a, a couple of screws here on the side would look good. And I just feel safer whenever I'm working with a UI on the side, just telling me and, and showing up in the front, just giving me additional information because I generally read things rather fast. And just by having that sort of awareness, it allows me to make more informed decisions. So 
I hope that is the same value that you guys are able to get out of it. Also, the uh, mirror doesn't appear to be updating for the correct way in that particular scenario. But I'll pretend I did not see that. Just kidding, I might have to report that. So here we are, we have our shape, and I'll even go ahead and turn on Bloom, which is under Render. Let's see, we, we probably want to lower the threshold. There we go. So yeah, now we're getting some, some good bloom in action happening. And we'll press W and exit this. And press D just to see what decal machine has for us. And it appears I don't actually have it installed this moment or else I'd slap a few decals on it just to call it a day. Sorry, who am I kidding? I paused the video and I reinstalled or re-enabled decal machine because I love decal machine. All my favorite decals are here. And even though I'm also a KitOps user for different reasons, I can't help going in here and grabbing some of my favorite decals and just slapping them on the model. And we'll go ahead and just adjust the metallic on that. So that way we can know that our eye has been inspected and then we'll grab a few more here let's see i feel like i'm missing some of my some of my sch kits which are my favorite might i add so just looking at this wondering if this is an older pack or something or an older collection of my decals because I am a decal collector. You know, if you ever wonder who buys all the decal packs, this guy. I mean, especially if it looks like it could go on a robot. Yep, right in the shopping cart. Just saying. So right here, you know, once you start putting words on a model, it's a done deal. And of course, the Mr. Rat Tools decals, he makes the best decals. Get that shader, five seconds to compile. And what if I wanted to get this on all four sides? Well, I could do it the way I have been doing it, or I could just control click radial array and change the axis. Oh wait, sorry, uh, it's late. I meant to click radial array and voila. So now we have it on all four sides. However, we do have to ensure that it's perfect on all sides. Huh. I'm debating if it's easier to fix it or if it's easier to fix this cylinder because I feel like this cylinder isn't positioned properly. And that could be it. However, let's take all let's take out the radial array. Here we'll hide that and maybe even go back to regular viewport for a moment. All right, and now we look at it and it's actually correct. So it was us. So we take a look at our eye here and our eye is almost complete. You know what'd be crazy is if it had like some like grill lid that it opened that was uh, made up of like little lines. I know, I know it's late, but just can't help it. But with that, you know, I think we could wrap up this particular demo as well. I just wanted to just kind of go through just some of these last items from the last couple of tutorials and just talk about them casually and just go through remodeling them again in a um, more adventurous atmosphere. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope to see you guys next time.